have some people hop on, make sure that the feed is broadcasting correctly. We should be appearing both on YouTube and on Facebook. So if you're watching, be sure to throw the video a like on either platform. Let us know that you can see the stream. And we have a fun project that we're stitching today that was released a little bit ago, but we haven't talked about it in a while. And when I was looking through the samples, I thought this is perfect for post Valentine's Day, almost spring. So we'll give it a few minutes to let some people hop on. If you wanna say hi, throw a comment in the comment section, let us know where you're tuning in from. Um, if you have not joined us for a live stitch out yet, my name is Melissa. And behind the scenes, we have Haley and Catherine here to help us out with our embroidery project today. So we are gonna go ahead and get started. Have some people maybe saying hi there, letting us know they're tuned in. So while we wait, today's project's gonna be a really fun one, you guys. I decided that with spring right around the corner and Valentine's Day having just ended, this would be a really fun project to introduce our technique of the week. So the technique of the week is every Tuesday we pick a different technique of Anita Good Designs to feature in our different design collections that we have, how the technique is done, and different ways it can be applied in our projects. So for this week, our Technique Tuesday featured standard embroidery. So we took it all the way back to the basics, and this is something that quite literally involves embroidery thread, a needle, and either a stabilizer or a material that you're stitching your design on. So there's no applique usually involved. Um, we can see standard embroidery on things like quilt blocks too. So I have some samples pulled from the side that I wanna show you guys while we're stitching today. Um, but I chose this project because it is adorable. We are making a mini mesh flower hoop. Now, this is a four by four friendly collection. So if you're at home and you're like, I have a tiny machine hoop, this one's perfect for you. And if you have a jumbo hoop, then I know you got all the smaller sizes. So very quick and easy project. You can stitch out, um, gift them to people or hang them in your own home. So I have a small sample here to show off exactly what it looks like that we're making. Now, if you're watching this at home, it probably looks almost like it's floating because we have this really cool mesh tool in it. Now I'll show you a little close up of what material I'm working with here. So again, here's the collection that we are doing, mini mesh flower hoops. And basically you get to stitch your little bundles of florals onto this almost tool-like material. So an important note is that we are using two layers and in the traditional tutorial that this was released in, we used white. Now I was out of white today when I was looking in the fabric room and I thought, how perfect, with spring, we have this pretty pink one. So I wanted to try it with the pink. It does give a different effect, but it's very light, so you can't really tell the color once it's hanging. So I wanted to show you guys that, but here is the embroidery stitching. So you can kind of see how it goes directly onto that netting or tool. We have a regular bobbin on there we didn't color match. And obviously, if this was a finished project, we could glue these down or trim it tight so that you don't see the excess. But I wanted to be able to pop it in and out and show you guys exactly how to do this with a dry copy. Um, so to go over exactly what I have here, the important thing is it is not tool and it is not organza. It is a mesh kind of material. I had to go to Hobby Lobby today and try to ask around for it. <laughs> this is just what I explained was I need a mesh with no stretch. Um, and it has like a larger hole to it. If you guys can kind of see the little honeycomb pattern in there. So we're gonna use two layers of them. I don't have a packaging to tell you the brand or exact specifics, but we do have the details in our tutorial. So I'll read you guys that exactly what we put. We said nylon, no stretch netting, and you'll need about four inches. So nylon, no stretch netting would be the name of this. Um, I called it mesh, but you know, whatever you guys wanna call it. Um, very cool and I liked this pretty pink color. I also have my embroidery threads and two pieces of wash away stabilizer. I wanna make sure I show you guys that it is wash away. And I have a five by seven hoop. So we'll go ahead and get started in a second. But in case you guys are just now tuning in, again, my name is Melissa. We are stitching a fun and fast project today that features our technique of the week, which is standard embroidery. And I have this adorable little mini mesh flower hoop. So. I hope there's some people in the comments excited to see how this is done. It's a really cool effect with just standard embroidery. Do you want to say hey to a couple people? Yeah, let's say hi to a few people while I get some things ready. Uh, Martha, of course. Martha, I know you're on, Martha. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, Martha. We'd love to see you. Mary from Delaware. Mary. Hi, Mary from Delaware. We've got a couple of Michigans, Florida. Michigan and Florida. My parents are in Florida. Maybe my mom's tuning in. <laughs> we'll see. But I'm so glad you guys could hop on with us. I don't want to spend too much time in the beginning going over that. So we'll get started. Um, the important thing I just mentioned is that to do the mini mesh flower hoop that I'm making today, like you see here, we're going to need two layers of a wash away stabilizer. So water soluble. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and slide the hoop into my machine. And I have two pieces of the organza already pre-cut here. It's not four by four, but four by four is the minimum that you would need. So I just cut two large chunks out. And I have my machine steps printed out for me here so I can reference the color changes. And we'll go ahead and pull up our design file. So I had it loaded to my USB stick. If you're curious, I am stitching design number seven, which are these really cute blue flowers. But to really make it fun, I'm gonna change up the colors a bit and do some Anita pinky purple colors on this like pinky tool. Same design that you see here, but I'm making it my own with my own colors. So I just thought I'd try it in a different set for you guys, show you something different. All right, so I have my design pulled up on screen and I'm gonna go ahead and hit embroidery. Now the first step is a placement stitch for our little mesh netting that we have here. So I'm gonna use a nice darker color that way you guys can see it. Now, if you're watching and you've done standard embroidery, which I'm sure most of you, if you're tuned in, have, because that's the basis of most of our designs, I'm curious what's something you guys enjoy stitching on. Like, we're doing a unique material here. Is there a cool project you've done with standard embroidery? Give us some ideas, and maybe we might stitch it one day. Of course, my Madeira wants to catch on the spool. Making a mess. There we go. Somebody had fun winding that weird. They just put all the excess back on the spool and it got in a little knot. So there we go. We got a smooth path for our thread and we're going to thread our needle. And of course, the first step in this design is, like I said, the placement stitch. So we're going to go ahead and run that placement stitch to show us where our little circle will be. Now, while that's running, the important thing I mentioned is it is 4x4 four four compatible, which is perfect for these adorable little wooden hoops. So if you've never seen these before, they can be bought at the craft stores. Um, they basically are like large hoops and they pop apart. If I can unscrew this one. <laughs> there we go. Like lefty loosey, righty tighty, right guys? That's the only way I can remember to do it. All right, so there you can see opens and closes and we can tighten. So I have two of these over here to kind of set aside for the project. Now for our mesh netting, we have our two pieces here. I'm gonna just lay them doubled up. Doesn't matter if the holes crisscross or are lined up. I prefer them to kind of interlock, like mismatch each other instead of being spot on. But don't fret about it, you guys. Just lay it in there. You don't have to overthink this. It will work. It's so fun. All right, so I've covered my placement stitch with both layers. You can use tape if you would like, but I'm going to go ahead and just kind of spot it with my hands and let it tack it down in place. I'm trying to lower my arms so you guys can see there. Oh, and my stitch doesn't want to work. So what we're going to do is go ahead and start that step over. If this ever happens to you guys, don't worry, you're not alone. It happens to Anita people too. So it just wasn't wanting to catch. So to fix that, I'm just going to check my bobbin. And this is a good protocol to always do for everyone if you're like, I'm not sure why this isn't stitching right. It just wasn't catching, so I have a feeling it just couldn't grab the bobbin stitch. And there you go, there it is. Our needle plate cover back on. And make sure my needle is still threaded, which it is. Now, the slider hoop back in. It didn't quite tack both layers, it only kind of partially tacked one. So I started that step back at the beginning by just navigating in, in my machine. Lock my hoop in so it turns green, and now we can try that stitch again. So we'll see if hopefully this time it'll hold. There we go. It's definitely just the bottom. And again, you could always change the thread color you're using for this. If you look at my finished sample, this circle is perfectly sized to fit within this hoop, but you can always pull it out. It's not a basting stitch, but let's say you pop the bobbin of that circle on the back, you could pull the stitches out so that it's not in the circle. But I love them because it helps you align it in your hoop. So that is the main focus there. We are not gonna trim because a lot of times we trim after our tacking stitch, but because we're adding embroidery, I'm just gonna leave that excess there and not really mess with it. So now we are going to run the next step, which says it's gonna be my bottom left leaf and leaf bud, so a little flower bud, and I wanted it in my medium color. So I had a darker color, this kind of medium purple, and then a light. So I'm following how the blues were ran, but just in a different color way. So we'll go ahead and start that little leaf section. 
very fun to do and they don't take very long to stitch you guys we ran one this morning so that we would have our second little copy here which speaking of i'm going to go ahead and unhoop so you can see that finished design and this is it dry i do have hot water set aside to show you guys the rinsing and everything so you guys get the whole treatment today all right so after we've done our medium color step number four is telling me we are going to do light green leaves and obviously you guys can change up these colors to be anything that you want. But I'm kind of following along with the lights and the darks, making it my own. If you have a fun floral project that you're working on for spring season right around the corner, drop it in the comments and let us know. We love seeing what you guys are working on. I know we have people post in our fan group all the time, the projects they've been stitching, and we'd love to see them. All right, so I have my light green going. Now, in and between the stitching, because the steps are so short, I wanted to kind of talk to you guys about some samples that we have here, and as the needle needs to change, I'll just kind of talk you through exactly what colors we're switching to and what part it's doing. Um, but I wanted to go over standard embroidery and some other ways that we use standard embroidery in our designs. So if you've been checking out our shop recently, you'll know online we have tons of 4x4 friendly collections that are napkin cocktail size, but that doesn't mean they have to go on napkins. Now, you might be wondering why we always do them on napkins. It's because it's perfect to tell when the embroidery is pulling or shifting the fabric around. So a lot of times our four by fours, you'll see us do them on these napkins. They can go on anything. You could stitch this on a doggy outfit, a doggy shirt, you could put it on here if you are a Frenchie lover. Um, I love the I'll lick the dishes, you dry. But all these cute little dogs, this was Pampered Pooches collection. Um, very adorable with the little dog motifs. There were several in this set but they don't have to be cocktail napkins. So this is just our standard embroidery and this collection along with a lot of our four by fours that you've been seeing, they come with this basting stitch file that can be used for the cocktail napkin or any other garment or project you're stitching on. So it'll basically just give you a box, it'll baste down your material or project item, and then you can run the design merged to that basting stitch file. So a great way to use the embroidery files on just about anything. I'm not allowed to swear, but is, does it count if I'm reading when it says, I should do not? <laughs> so funny. My mom would crack up at that one. And then, of course, we have the My Children Bark. So super cute. We have tons of different versions of cocktail napkins slash 4x4 embroidery designs. I just pulled this one because it was right near the top. And I want to make a little shout out that we have a whole section called Fun and Fast where we have lots of those standard embroidery designs. My color just finished. So while we interject here, we're gonna go ahead and change our thread to a dark green. So I just did the light green. If I can find the end of this thread spool, there it is. Fun tip, if you guys can never find where your thread is, pull it towards the end of the spool and it'll just start to unravel correctly for you. If you're newer, you might not know that trick, so I love to tell people if they're struggling with finding the end of their thread, just pull it all towards the end. All right, so I have my dark green in there. We're gonna go ahead and continue on. And I'll show you guys another embroidery collection. Now this one is done on a base fabric and we chose to bind the samples, but they are an entirely embroidered collection. So this is our vintage coral reef. It is so pretty. And we have tons of different critters from the ocean here. And we did them in almost a blue work shade. So you can see how we have the octopus. Very pretty parrotfish, I believe this is, because I've been in Florida and I've seen some of these underwater. They're awesome. Really cool crab. And I want to show you guys these up close, too, so you can see this pretty standard embroidery stitching. I know my Australian people, my Florida ladies, all my coastal women, they probably love this. <laughs> and it's just done with, like, running stitch um, two plies here. And then all this is standard embroidery, so there's no applique under it. They are just stitched. And then, like I mentioned, we stitched them on this pretty linen and then just chose to bind the sample. So you can even do this as a little welcome flag or a banner in your kitchen or dining space. But there you can see some of that embroidery. So I really think it's so cool. We talk about so many different techniques, but don't really just talk about standard embroidery. Your machine does all the work, so all you do is set the design in and hit go, and you end up with really pretty results like this. I love the octopus. The shading is so cool. So that's just an extra one I wanted to show, again, with some standard embroidery on it. And not everything is Christmas, so I have to show you some other seasons as well, so ocean seems perfect. All right, so my dark green just finished. We are on machine step number six. 
which tells me that is going to be the base petal color, which should be my medium tone. So I'm going to go with that pretty purpley color. And this almost matches my tool netting shade that I picked. Oops. All right. So we have that threaded in. Yes, I see we have a question on the back side. What's up? Uh, Michelle would like to know, are there any designs of birds that could be embroidered on mesh? And also, are there any other designs of Anita that can be done on mesh as well? That is an excellent question. We just got asked if there's any other collections to do on the mesh yet. I'm going to go with no because this is the only one I know of right now. But I was just talking about this with our wonderful embroidery coworker Josephine. You might have seen her on our Meet the Staff Day. Josephine and I were talking about how we could use this in other projects as well. And we said the best thing would be to suggest trying it. Try it on this. Obviously, you need a stabilizer, um, but try a different embroidery collection. Maybe you have like an entirely stitched bird and its density is not too high. You don't want it to be super thick shading um, and you also don't want it to be super sparse. These flowers were just stitched like normal. When I watched the embroidery go out, I didn't notice any special underlay. It just looked like a fill stitch. Um, since we haven't prototyped it, I don't want to guarantee that they will work. But that's something that we do for fun where we prototype or test things. So maybe pick a Saturday or Sunday where you have nothing going on and you want to try it. Give it a try. Definitely do two layers of your mesh netting or tool um, and that wash away two layers as well. That is what helps the, whoop, I'm throwing it. That's what helps the stitching sit over that without pulling it in. Um, obviously hoop everything tight, your stabilizer tight and just keep an eye on it. That would be my best suggestion. Now, we did also have Haley here on social media suggest an awesome collection that I passed along to our art director, which would be snowflakes for winter. So if you think that's a cool idea, let us know in the comments. Um, we can always try to develop this concept further to other stuff, but this one was originally made just to be a fun, fast, really unique project. Um, but I think it'd be really cool to try it with other florals or birds, like you said, in a bigger hoop. Um, but that's something you just have to give a shot. So we all get to try different embroidery things. We haven't done that ourselves yet, but I put it on a radar to give it a shot eventually. So now we are at, still step six, did I not hit go? I didn't, <laughs> I was answering your question. All right, so we'll let that flower step stitch. It says about nine minutes or so. So while we let that run, I'll go over some of these other embroidery collections. So again, I mentioned these beautiful ocean critters. This was our, where's the name? I wanna say it's Ocean Schwal. Nope, I lied, Vintage Coral Reef. We have so many names, guys, I have to keep track of them all in my head. Vintage Coral Reef is the name of this one that I just showed. With that standard embroidery, again, you can stitch it on anything. We just did little sample squares here. I think this would look awesome on white pillows too, like throw pillows. Some other great examples, standard embroidery collections, are these negative space Christmas designs that we have. And if you know Anita, you know it's always Christmas with us. We stitch Christmas year round. Obviously Christmas in July is a big time for us as well. Um, but there's never a time we don't wanna talk about the holidays because people love the time to stitch their projects. So if we do it too close to the holidays, you don't have enough time to embroider. So I wanted to feature one of our best selling collections. This one was huge when it came out in 2018. This is Negative Space Christmas. It is shown here on a handmade pillowcase. So we just did a simple slip over pillowcase style. Um, and we show that embroidery on this linen. We also have it done on a tea towel. And we did a small one. It's not a full size that can wrap over. Again, it was a sample for events to show it off. Um, but this is a beautiful standard embroidery collection. It features multiple color steps to kind of create this divide in the design. You can run it monochromatic as well. So if you just want to do all shades of red like you see here, or maybe you want to put in metallics in some spot, the negative space spells out the words. So we have some really cool designs here. This one's Peace, and then obviously we have Noel. There are multiple in the set, but that was our Christmas negative space, and it features that stunning standard embroidery. Um, I will show you guys up close too, because standard embroidery is just not the same unless you're seeing the stitches. So here's that really pretty piece pillowcase that we did. Again, it has almost a hand stitched look to it with that multiple ply stitch pass over it. And again, I mentioned earlier, this is so great for beginners or people who don't love to do a lot of cutting and trimming because you just thread your machine with the color that you want, run the step, and you change out the thread whenever the next step comes up. Now, if you're really lucky and have a multi-needle, then this is even better. Like You can just set it, go, <laughs> finish the whole design while you're enjoying coffee or the news. 
Um, for the Noel, here it is shown in that red colorway. Some burgundies, and we did a fun little textured tea towel here. And if you're curious, I don't think we need a topper on this one, but we may have used it. So a lot of times if you use towels that have that plush texture to it, you might want to put a water soluble film or topper over your design before running the stitching. But I want to say, oh, yep, no, I can see some right in the stitches where we did not take it out. There you go. So I can tell you by looking inside the leaves, it's see-through, so you'll have trouble seeing it. But there is a little bit of topper in here. So we did use a water-soluble topper on this one, but it's just standard embroidery. We had a tear-away stabilizer for this sample, but I would suggest a wash away so it comes out nice and clean. So very cool there. Last one, I'll keep the phone up on this one so you can see this one as well. This is our autumn negative space season. So 2021 is when that was released. There is more than just fall in here, but since I just showed some Christmas, I wanted to show another season. You can see the pumpkin spice, very cute, with those embroidered stitches. Try to show you guys in the light too. That polyester always has that nice shine to it. Super cute. So those are negative space seasons and negative space Christmas. Again, strictly standard embroidery. You can run them on just about anything. And it's never too early for us to talk about Christmas. Another great seasonal one I pulled from our sample area was wreaths for all seasons. So I double checked on the website. It is a standard embroidery collection, but the stitching is much more filled in. So it makes these beautiful wreaths that are seasonal based on whatever season you choose. Um, I only had a sample for this fall one, but we have other designs in there as well as florals, so you can use a pretty spring floral wreath. And this was just the cutest concept, but we made a garden flag. So we have this sparkly burlap material here. We just created a channel and then flip and turned the shape. So we made a pennant shape on fabric, sewed the edges together, and then turned it right side out with that little channel at the top. And then we have our fall embroidery. So since this one has that sparkle in it, I wanna show you guys that as well. Super pretty, you can see that fall embroidery in here. And obviously the project took some construction because we chose to do it on this, but just the design can be ran on anything. You could even add words in your home embroidery machine or custom fonts, like in our collection Anita's fonts. You could get letters and write out your family last name and put this in your garden. That would be so pretty. Look at the light hitting that, you guys. So nice, and it's hard to tell, but that burlap is sparkly. I really think that seals the deal for this fall look. Super cute. So that one's wreaths for all seasons. Now I wanted to check in real quick and take a little peek at our design running so you guys can see what's happening here. This actually would be a great one for the phone, Haley. I want to show them that fill stitch. So I'll have you guys kind of take a look there. So that is what I mean by what I looked at. It looks pretty standard to me, but I'm not a digitizer. I just work with our digitizers. And so I want to say it might have a special grid-like stitch to it. So definitely just keep an eye on what design you choose if you want to try this on your own with something else. Um, but this collection was intended for that. So again, here's my blue design. The flowers look fairly normal. There's our bobbin stitches and all the length seems normal. So I'd have to say you'd give it a try, but don't quote me on it. I love how you can see my shadow over here <laughs> of the flowers. So cute. So there is our purple running. And again, I mentioned before that we stitched this on a white tool or like sheer mesh material, but that you can use any color you want. We didn't have any more white, so I saw this really fun pinky purple color and decided to change it up and do it with this color. Once you hold it up and hang it, you can't really tell what color the mesh is unless you put it against a white wall, in which case the color will be very subtle, um, but it will have that extra little touch to it. Now for some other fun ones that I have here to show you guys. Easter is around the corner, so you can imagine we just finished talking about Valentine's Day. We're gonna go hard with Easter soon too. So we're gonna be talking about all the bunnies, all the crosses, all the Easter egg things that you can imagine. Um, so I pulled this beautiful table runner that we made with one of our Easter designs. And now we might have to look up on the site the name of this one because I can't quite remember. I think it's vintage Easter sketch. Um, but if you keyword search any of that, this will probably pop up. I want to say Easter sketch is somewhere in the name. Um, beautiful. We just released, I think, last year in spring. Uh, and this one is a fully functional table runner. So we made both ends embroidered here. And very pretty. I'm going to go ahead and change my thread color real quick so it doesn't take too long. Oh, just kidding. It stopped because it needs to be re-threaded. 
I know we've all encountered that once or twice. And the machine just says, nope, I lost it. So we'll go ahead and as we learned earlier, I wanna double check my bobbin too, just to make sure that's good to go. And if we have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. Yeah. Uh... Viola, 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 beautiful. Uh, would like to know or have if you have any recommendations for weatherproofing fabrics for like outside mm -hmm. flags and stuff. If I have suggestions for weatherproofing fabric for outside flags, I don't because truthfully, myself working here at Anita, we make a lot of our samples to photograph and show you, and they stay indoors. <laughs> so we haven't experienced too much with outside weather. Um, I want to say, is it marine vinyl is one of the materials that's pretty weather resistant. Um, faux vinyl, obviously, and then they make things that feel like linen that are water resistant, but that would be something I say, do what we would do, which is head to the internet and just search for what you're looking for. Um, I'm always a proponent to say shop local if you can. So if you know a local fabric dealer or someone that sells materials, even Hobby Lobby rather than Amazon, <laughs> I'm fine with that too. Um, but any of those places that you could check nearby first or give them a call, see if they have something and just say what you're looking for exactly, which would be water resistant or weather resistant material. Um, pretty much any of them can probably be embroidered on from what I know as long as you use the correct needle So if you have denim, maybe switch your needle to a denim needle um, I also believe they make fabric treatment sprays that you can spray on other materials that help it become weather resistant um, So that would be something I say do a little research if you want to make a project <laughs> for outside But for the most part like this one here was just a linen and it it feels like you could get this wet and it wouldn't matter It would just dry out um, so definitely check out, uh, I want to say in the fabric sections, they have like home decor fabric. You could ask that department and see, do you have anything that's more weatherproof and give that a go. But that's an excellent question. I have to always be honest with you guys that we stitch and don't set it out in the rain. So I can't say for sure firsthand, but that would be something I say, just ask around, see what they suggest, and then go from there. Give it a try. Good question though. If you guys have other questions, just let me know. Like I said, I am an expert up to what I have stitched here and what I know. So I'm never the end all be all. You can always learn from other people. So if you do know some good materials, sound off in the comments and let her know. Viola, I believe, was who asked that question. So feel free to tag her if you know some materials she can search or find. And then we all act collaboratively like we're in a group together. I love that. So I picked back up on that embroidery for the flower. It just stopped and kind of broke the thread. So we're gonna let that keep going. Martha said they can try Sunbrella fabric. Sunbrella. Okay, so Martha uh, chimed in and said Sunbrella is a type of fabric. Thank you, Martha, for letting us know. Uh, Martha's also our embroidery expert, too, so you can always shoot her a message or our customer experience email to ask, and she has so many answers. We love her for it. But, yes, that would be a great one to check out, see if they have anything you'd like. All right, so I did show off this you like really pretty Easter design. I did want to show you guys it in another color because maybe this whole black and tan thing isn't your vibe. That's fine. The beautiful part about embroidery is that you can do it any way you like. So we have this really classic rustic looking table runner, but we also did it in this really pretty peach color way. So I think this one just screams spring. It's so cute, very vibrant and colorful, and you can still see the design really well. Yes, I see we have another I feel question. Like happy Easter sketch. Happy Easter sketch. There we go. Thank you for Catherine looking that up for us. So if you're curious which one this is, happy Easter sketch. So very cute. It makes sense. It says happy Easter right on it. Sometimes we're not too fancy with names and they're quite self-explanatory. Um, but I want to show you this one up close as well. There it is. It's like, where did I set my device? Super cute. The stitching has that vintage look to it. I just love how the bunnies were digitized. Show that to you in some of the sunlight here. Ooh, the light just made that a really cool color. Um, so very nice. I think we did like a corally color on this peach type of material. And this again was just a sampler. You could do this on a placemat or the really cool table runner we did here. I'll show you that one. So now you can kind of see that same design in two different thread colors that kind of contrast it creates. So very pretty. I love, this one looks very barn rustic style and this one just screams spring. So different looks to the same exact design depending how you stitch it. Hopefully this is fun for you all to learn a little bit more about some of these standard embroidery things. Um, I talked about standard embroidery on just stitching through fabric, but a lot of times you'll also see standard embroidery in our quilting collections. So usually we try to keep the identifier for standard embroidery just embroidery designs, 
Um, but a lot of times quilts are just quilts and they have no other feature except the standard embroidery on them. And so I have a few kind of hanging out around me and some samples here. The first one I wanted to show is this journaling quilt. This one is a standard embroidery collection done on white cotton. I have it hanging right next to me, so I figured what a perfect one to feature. It's so pretty for spring. And the cool thing about this one is that it is colorable with those water-based fabric markers. And what you're seeing is one of our staff members who had colored it in. And we have never washed it, but I can tell you it can be washed out. Uh, and then you have a blank black and white quilt again. So very cool. They have beautiful verses on them as well as just positive designs, pretty florals. Um, and this one we made as a sampler, so a skinnier wall hanging, but you can do a whole quilt or wall piece with that. And like I mentioned, we just colored it with fabric markers. So the whole design is just black and white line work. And then you can kind of customize what you want it to look like. Now, I love this quilt because this is an awesome one to give kids or teenagers or even yourself if you're bored and need something to de-stress. You just sit there, grab some fabric markers and color it in. And then whenever you're over it or done with the colors, you can just wash the whole thing and start over. So very pretty. I love the in quietness and in confidence shall be your string. Lots of beautiful verses on this one. So that's a standard embroidery quilting collection. And you can see that really cool stippling is already built in. And it has the text and verbiage all over it. So just wanted to call it that one. While we go ahead and switch our design, the red color here. I'm on step number seven out of 10. If you guys wanna know how many steps there are, we're getting through it, so not too much. Now I need my dark thread color. So this is gonna be the inner shading on these pretty purple flowers. And I want a hot pink, like the Anita pink butterfly that you guys have probably seen, just like our logo. So go ahead and thread my pink. Oh, I love that I made these flowers a different color because it already looks so good with this mesh on it. All right, so while that's going, Scoot my device out of the way. I have another quilt here. So the rest of the ones I grabbed are quilts because I did want to talk about embroidery on quilting in case you're maybe more of a quilter. So whether you're new or not, um, you might have tried a quilting collection or maybe you're still in the embroidery mode and haven't done quilting in the hoop. They are all easy and beginner friendly. This one does feature another technique in it which is folded fabric because of its borders. Um, but the design that's featured in the center is strictly stitching which is why I wanted to grab it and kind of show it off. It's very pretty. I loved the colorway of this one. It was like a mint and green with a coral. And all of the designs are insects, bugs, birds, and just all kinds of nature things. So again, I was thinking spring when I was done with Valentine's Day, I said, what's next up around the corner? This would be it. Um, lots of pretty spring things like this. And if I show you guys the designs in this one, I love that the stitching actually changes its thickness depending what part of the design it's embroidering. So we have a much lighter stitch here in the background on these florals, and then they increase the stitches here. Obviously color makes the contrast pop too. So we got that bumblebee. We have a really cool, I think it's like a raven or a crow. Someone can correct me if there is a difference. <laughs> As I'm still trying to figure that out. Then we got some butterflies here with the pretty florals. Love how it has charcoal in there too. And again, we matched this with a fat quarter bundle of fabric. So there is folded fabric around each block just as a frame, kind of tie it all together. But the design itself has no applique, no trimming needed. You just cut your borders. And fun fact, if you've never done them, this is another lesson for another week, but we always cut about two inches wide for our strips, two to two and a half inches wide to pre-cut for our borders. That way we don't have to sit there and measure all night. Look at that cute little dog. So very pretty standard embroidery designs for you on that one. And the name of this collection is Quiet Oasis. I, I think I missed saying that in the beginning, but Quiet Oasis is this one. I see we have another question in our live. Yes, what's our question? Uh, Mary would like to know if we're going to show any of the machine cover designs, but I was on the phone and she brought it up. The machine, oh, the gnome one? Is that what she's I think about? she's talking about the one we already have made if you had any of those out to show. I don't have them out to show, the machine cover, oh, but you want to tease it? I, I could. I don't have any of the blocks with me though, but I will tell you guys since you tuned in live, we were being asked if we had any of our sewing machine, our sewing machine cover sample to show you guys kind of that. Um, and it did have some standard embroidery in those blocks as well. The fun teaser information is that if you have been watching our Instagram or Facebook videos as we've been popping on our feed, we are currently working on a new project that is a sewing machine cover. 
and I want you guys to get excited because you'll start seeing more information about it in the coming weeks, but we are going to be turning that one into an online course. Um, you can purchase just the tutorial or you can purchase it as an online course. So you haven't seen it yet. It's not on the website, but on our stories and social, you've probably seen us working with really fun pattern fabrics and some gnome designs. So it is going to be a gnome sewing machine cover. So that is in the works and it does feature some standard embroidery on it. So I don't have those blocks to show off, but they're so cute and we have been teasing them. So go check them out if you haven't looked yet. Um, and thank you for reminding me of that, Catherine. That is a good one. But the sewing machine cover does feature standard embroidery. And that's great if you're looking to make a finished project too. Um, I am now moving on to, let's see, step eight is my highlights. So a light color, which I have here. We're almost done. We're in the home stretch, you guys. I just have this last petal color and the two colors in the center. And then if you're still tuned in, you get to watch me rinse it and finish it off. I can show you trimming it down, rinsing it, and then I have the dry one with me to show you the hooping process. So really, you guys get the whole, whole spiel today. I get to show you all of it. Um, I'm gonna take this time now to mention that we have a promo code that if you stayed tuned in today, we wanted to reward you for hopping onto our live. So today we are doing a $5 off your entire order with the code FREE5. That should be up on screen for you guys to check out. That is going to be valid all day today until midnight Eastern Standard Time. So we are in Charlotte, North Carolina, the East Coast um, in the US, because I know we have people all over the world. So when that expires at 1159 or midnight, um, the code no longer works, but the video that we're watching, you can always rewatch this and stitch along with us. And I'll go ahead and tease that starting tomorrow. I love to tell my live tune in people about the sales that are coming up. Um, so tomorrow, starting Friday, we will have a sale on standard embroidery. So embroidery collections will be, I think, um, 35 is what I wrote down, 35% off. So we'll be doing 35% off from tomorrow until Tuesday next week for standard embroidery. So we were talking about all this great embroidery stuff. So all the collections marked embroidery collections um, will be featured at 35% off. So definitely get to stitching soon. If you haven't tried some of these out, um, definitely give them a go. I have two more quilt samples here I can show off while we wait for these last little bits to show up on the design. Um, we talked about quilts, and so this is another absolutely beautiful quilt done with standard embroidery. It does have those folded fabric borders, but we've broken down folded fabric about a, last week or a week or two ago on our blog on the website, as well as on YouTube with some video instruction on how we do fold. Um, so there's lots of resources if you're new to folded fabric, but it's literally just four border pieces. The design is why I grabbed this one. They are so stunning. I will show that close up. Let me just swap my thread color for you guys real quick. But the one that I'm about to show off over here on the table that I set down is Gilded Botanicals. And it is just so stunning. My next color here is gonna be dark. This will be in the center of the flowers. I hope you guys had fun watching this stitch out because I tried to pick something that was exciting and interesting. So we're gonna go ahead and hit go on that. And then I wanted to feature this Gilded Botanicals quilt. Absolutely beautiful. The gold obviously is what makes it so beautiful. But we have in the light, that nice sparkle to the gold thread here. No applique under the flowers, they're all fully stitched. And I like the combination of satin stitched vines with the little bean stitch swirls. And we have just such pretty flower colors too. There we go again, you guys, my thread <laughs> broke. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. It's being cranky today, so that tells me I probably need to change my needle soon. And before you ask, well, how often do you change your needle? Not as much as we should. That's the correct answer. I won't give you a number because we'd be shamed. <laughs> we change it when it breaks, but it hasn't broken. So as long as it's still going, I'm going. All right, try that again. Just doing my little spots. All right, I think we're good. It's still going, <laughs> little spots there. All right, but we have our Gilded Botanical quilt here. I was just mentioning how pretty these florals are with the different color shading in them as well as those metallic pops. So definitely try a standard embroidery collection using metallic thread or holographic thread, something you might not normally stitch in because you don't have to worry about ripping up fabric appliques or tearing things out. It's just stitching through one base material. So some Collections would be fun to try that with if you haven't used different thread types. Um, but this one was just really pretty. So pulled it because of the florals. 
And then we have, I think it's almost ready for my next color. There we go. Last step we are doing for the florals. So I got a nice little sunshiny yellow here, my 532 in Floriani. Trim. And we'll go ahead and thread up that last color. So this one's gonna run really quick. I'll show you my last sample. We'll go over our coupon code again, and then I will show you the rinsing. All right, so I got my final color set. We're gonna go ahead and hit embroidery. And then I want to show you this last one. Now I do have this hanging up on the wall to the side, but it's a little bit out of shot, so I don't think you guys can see it. This is a stunning tile scene done with standard embroidery. Um, and it is a quilt collection because of it being a tile scene. But this is our Midsummer Night Tapestry. Now, she is a beauty, you guys. We've done it in two different colorways. We have done it on this black velvet. Yes, this is velvet. And if you were here and could feel it, you would be amazed. And I'm even amazed they did the binding in velvet, too. That's an amazing feat in itself. If you know anything about binding quilts, velvet is very slippery. So the way they did this, I don't even know. <laughs> But it is a stunning scene. I know it's folded in half, but it's quite large, so I didn't want to cover myself up while talking. But this one is done with standard embroidery only. We used a metallic silver thread for the whole thing. Now, what I want to show on close-up is one of my favorite features, and if you are familiar with our art director, Carol, she and I were just talking about this yesterday, about how the stippling was ran with a sparkle poly thread. Now the thread featured in the background is Gunnels Poly Star Sparkle, and we just used a black as our stippling stitch. So then once it was stitched onto this quilt, all of the stippling looks like the night sky. So it sparkles and shines, it is just so beautiful. And again, I mentioned it is done on velvet, so that is velvet that you're seeing. And there's no appliques, just entirely embroidery thread, making this beautiful garden inspired tile scene. The other version we did was on maroon velvet with gold thread. And they are just absolutely beautiful. So I wanted to feature the standard embroidery in this one and just a shout out to how pretty this gunnel thread is because I've been using it in a few of our designs. If you've never heard of it before, it's polyester like intertwined with a sparkle in it. So very fun to give it a go. I just want to show you that one. And that was my last sample. So we're going to go ahead and finish off our project for the day. I am going to show you guys that this is the finished look. I changed up my flowers a bit to make them purpley pink. And there is that loose thread from the beginning of the design where it just didn't want to catch quite, quite right. So I'll trim that away. Um, but what we're going to do now is hop on over to a bowl with hot water and I will show you guys how to rinse it out. So Haley behind the scenes has my bowl and cup set aside for me. Thank you, Adam. I have the best assistance here. And don't worry guys, I know you might get sick of seeing me. I'm trying to reel in some other people to do some lives with us soon. So hopefully you'll get to see some other people, not just Melissa, but I'm biased. I do have fun stitching with you all. So here's our really cute stitch out. Um, I do have just a thermos here with hot water. So what I'm gonna do is pop my top off and just pour that into my bowl. And yes, it made a little bit of a mess, but that's fine. It's just hot water. Um, I have also mentioned in the past when we rinse things with wash away or water soluble stabilizer that you can put OxyClean in the water. That's a bonus tip for you. It's not required. And all the time we get asked, what's the OxyClean do? How much? We're eyeballing it to like a tablespoon or a teaspoon for one big bowl. Um, the more that you're trying to dissolve, add a little more OxyClean. You don't need a ton. It gets really slimy really fast if you're using a lot of it. Um, but what it does is it helps eat up that water-soluble stabilizer super fast just because the chemical is an OxyClean. Um, it also helps because it can brighten your whites and your other colors because that's what OxyClean does. So sometimes we like to add it in with lace designs. I did not do that for today's design. All I have is strictly hot water, um, and it worked just fine in my sample from earlier that I have here. And so what I'm going to do is show you guys how to finish this off. I'm going to go ahead and remove it from the hoop, and I'm going to trim down as much of this excess stabilizer as I can. I don't want to cut the tool just yet. But just get some of the stabilizer. Oh, I cut a hole in it, of course I did. The less stabilizer when we go to rinse, the better, because you don't want this water to get all disgusting and slimy. Obviously, my best recommendation is to rinse with clean water repeatedly until the design is no longer sticky. Um, but I also hear people shout about, don't put it down your drain. <laughs> so. 
give it a clean rinse somewhere else, not in the drain. We don't want to clog our sink drains with stabilizer. So that's my recommendation for trimming is to get as much of it down as you can. Now, obviously I don't need all this excess, but I'm going to leave it there so when you see how it fits in the hoop, it doesn't matter because I have my dry one. Either way, <laughs> here's my design with those two layers of no sh or wash away stabilizer. And what I'm going to do is quite literally just submerge it into the water. So I'm going to grab the phone camera so you guys can see up close what's happening. And don't mind my spillage. But I just literally stick that in the hot water. I'm going to use my scissors to kind of slosh it around in here. And you can see how that stabilizer started to dissolve. And then I have some little tea towels here I just set aside so that I could press it dry a bit while showing it off. So there is the wet tool. Now, obviously, I wanted to rinse that better, but I'm doing this one handed for you guys <laughs> and not in the sink. But what we would do is go ahead and press out any water and we would just let it lay out to dry. So here is the dissolved stabilizer is gone. You can see right through it where my hand is and there's none left in the back and it is just damp. So what I would do is lay this flat to dry or on a drying board if you have one at home. If not, just lay it flat um, and maybe kind of change the towel out or rotate it. Um, what I have here is my dry sample and I have some embroidery hoops. Now I'm gonna to attempt to show you the setup one-handed and then I'll set the phone down and actually press it together. Um, so I have my pre-done one here in the blue colorway. I did stitch it in different colors in case you're checking out the end of the video. Um, but this one I did ahead of time so it's not wet. <laughs> that way I can show you guys how to hoop it. You'll see that stitch circle. That is to help you place it on the inner hoop. And then we have our outer hoop. And again, I can't get it perfectly straight because I'm doing this with one hand. Possibly, there we go. Not bad for one-handed. Obviously, you can pull and adjust and shift that in there. But there is our cute little floral design. So I'll go ahead and set the phone down and show this off again. Three-inch mini wooden hoops is the size that we used in this project. All the details of what materials I use today and what sizes for everything is in the original PDF for this collection. Again, the project today was mini mesh flower hoops. It is four by four hoop friendly. And this is the adorable finished result. Now, if you have that excess tool, like on this larger piece here, you go ahead and hoop your dry design. You can choose to take your scissors and trim the extra tool away, like I'm doing right here, and just match it up to the edge of the hoop, and then you won't see that excess when it's hanging. You can gift it to someone. Super precious. I love that. And I mentioned earlier, it does have a placement and tack down for that tool netting. Um, let's say the stitch is driving you crazy. If you're careful enough on the back before rinsing, you can always pop those stitches, um, the bobbin stitches, and pull that thread out if you don't want the circle. But I'm telling you, the circle is what helps you place it nice and centered in your hoop. So that's just some extra info for you guys. Um, reminders for our sale that's happening um, tomorrow. We'll be doing 35% off embroidery until Tuesday, I believe. And for you watching the live today, we are doing a $5 off your order purchase with the code FREE5. Um, enter that at checkout, and it's good until midnight tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit more about standard embroidery and the different applications we use it in, and happy stitching. Embroidery and the different applications we use it in, and happy stitching.